you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Psalms. Psalms 144 is where we'll take our text from this morning. Psalms 144, and we're going to begin reading in verse 9. Psalms 144, beginning in verse 9. The Bible says, I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an, in and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. It is, it is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his, his servant from the hurtful sword, rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, and our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands, and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, and there be no breaking in, nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is the people that is in such a case. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you for just being here with us this morning. Lord, we pray that you would send great happiness among your people this morning. We know of a surety that happiness comes from you and not we ourselves, Lord, and that you can bring it. God, help us to be the servant that we ought to be. Lord, that we'd be faithful always to your word, Lord, that uh, we would strive to preach it as uh, exactly as it's written, Lord, and nothing else. Lord, we pray uh, for your people that are here this morning, and we pray for the lost, Lord God that you would save this morning, that you'd speak mercy and grace to their hearts. And we'd always be faithful to give you the praise for it, for it's in Christ's name that we ask. Amen. Now, I'm going to be preaching this morning uh, on being happy, about two, a, two, a twofold happiness. And when I was first thinking of this message, I thought about saying uh, being happy in a sad day. And we do live in a sad day, but uh, we don't need to focus on that. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to be happy when you focus on things that are not good. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, if you follow in your news, you're going to be sad. First of all, the, the, the news that we see is all left-sided, and, and its very purpose is to discourage you to say that you're out there by your own, on the island by yourself, and nobody trusts God like you do. That's the purpose. i tell you what, and I don't know how it happened. I, I have a friend at work. I, uh, he helps me do some things, and I think he signed in on my computer, which I don't care because you can't get into other people's accounts. And I used to have, uh, whoever had my job before me, the, the screen page was CN, CNN News. And you talk about a pathetic excuse for some news, that's it. Yeah. But anyway, that's what it was always there, and it'd pop up and, and, and give you some gloom and doom to start the day. Well, one day Matt must have been on it, and now I have Google for my face for my primary page. And I thought, well, at least with Google you can look for something. And uh, but we live in a sad day of news, but don't let that steal your happiness. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, this week in, in New York, in New York State, they, they voted that, they, that you can have a, uh, an abortion up to the day the baby is born. Yeah. You know what? That's sad. That is sad. But you know what? It's been worse. You know, in, in, the, time, in the time of Israel's rebellion and they, were, uh, and they were serving idols, they was throwing kids as big as uh, Gracie out in a furnace. So it's been worse. A lot of people say, oh, it can't get any worse. Yes, it can. Uh, most assuredly, it can get worse. But God's people are to be a happy people. 
And you know what? When you go around, you don't see that. You know, you know some of the happiest believers that I ever saw were in South America. I'm getting to go back. I'm going to be gone, Jerry. You're going to have to preach for me. I'm going to be gone for a week. And they live in an area that we would call squalor. That they, that they, they don't have... Especially one group in particular. There's three groups down there, three churches. One in particular, really, they don't have nothing. Uh, very, very poor people. But you know what? And Matthew will probably tell you this too. Some of the happiest people I've ever been around. Happy in the Lord. Just glad for, glad for His goodness, glad for His grace. And that, 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 that ought to be a hallmark of God's people is being happy, being glad in the Lord. Uh, back in verse 9, uh, the Bible says, I will sing a new song. Now, uh, David was a writer of hymns and was a writer of songs, and he was wanting to come up with something new. And, and I believe this psalm, the, the rest of this psalm, was what he came up with. He wanted to sing. Do you want to sing for the Lord? Now, you may, you may be like me and you can't count rhythm and you don't have any tone to you. Yeah, hey, that's fine. Do you want to sing unto the Lord? Because, see, if you're singing to be heard, you're singing for the wrong reason anyway, so you may as well stop. But if you want to give praises unto the mighty God of heaven, you know what? Sing. It don't matter what you sound like. Sing unto the Lord. And that's where we ought to be this morning. It is a group of people that, that want a new song. And you know what? Every day we have something new to praise God for. And that's what David was wanting. He was wanting a new song. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Now, uh, I, I don't know much about music, and I, uh, uh, we had a, a, a kind of a psaltery one time, and it's more of a table instrument that you strum. And, uh, you know, there's some groups out there today that says we ought to use instruments. Now, I'll say this, and give you something to study for this week. There are no instruments mentioned in the New Testament, and that is where they get that. But they're not restricted either. And David says, I will sing on the, uh, on the psaltery, I will sing on the instrument of ten strings, and I don't know much uh, about the instrument of ten strings, and, and somebody can help me with this, but I think the banjo has either eight or ten strings. I love banjo music. I, I enjoy listening to it. And, and so he says, I'm going to make a new song, and every one of us ought to have a new song. Brother Mike, you got a new grandbaby. Write you a song about her. What, write it the goodness of the Lord. That's something to praise God for. Uh, listen, I see all four of my grandbabies, and something new comes to me. You know what? You know what my grandbabies give me? A hope for the next generation. In a pretty miserable day. A hope for the next generation. And, and so we ought to sing and praise the Lord. We ought to be happy of His goodness and grace. There's always something to sing about. I will sing praises unto thee. Now, that ought to be your key element of happiness is singing praises unto God. See, our music needs to be focused on Him. Uh, I would never allow my children when they were at home, once they left home, that was their business. They did what they want to. But in my house, no country music. Well, why do you want to sing about going down to a tavern? You know, well, where's the happiness in that? You know what I found with that kind of music? It's people looking for happiness, but don't know where to look. Rock music, and listen, guilty. Very guilty. We don't need any part of it whatsoever. Sing unto the praise. If you're going to sing, sing praises unto the Lord. Give Him great glory and great honor for who He is. And then a lot of people say, well, it don't matter. Yes, it most certainly does matter. Because listen, I can speak from experience. You get that junk up here and you will never get it out. Ever, ever, ever. I am one to testify to that. Don't start it. Don't ever start to begin with. Sing unto the Lord. Yeah, you ever thought that maybe the reason you're never happy is the junk you got up here? 
You ever think about that? Sing unto the Lord. We are to be a people that sing unto Him. <laughs> it is He that giveth salvation. Now, if you don't get nothing else out of that in this message this morning, it is Christ that gives salvation to people and not the other way around. Not one of your foolish sinner's prayers. It is He that gives salvation. You know why I'm here this morning? Because God gave me salvation. You know why I don't face the miseries of hell this morning? It's because God saved me. Not the other way around. I didn't come miserably to Him, but He came glorious and by grace unto me. That is the difference between truth and falsehood. You know what? The foolishness in approaching God is this. He can consume you in a moment. He has to come to you. And so then we as the Lord's people, uh, if you ain't got nothing else to praise Him for this morning, if you ain't got nothing else to be happy about, be happy that you're saved. Be happy that you're born again. Be happy that you are, 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 are living in His graces. He, it is He that giveth salvation unto kings and delivereth David and his servants from hurtful sword. Now, as uh, David is writing, he, got, he gives God the credit for deliverance. Now, uh, have you ever been delivered from anything? I have. I, I can go on and on and all day of the goodness God has delivered me from. You know what? And, and on the same subject I was talking about a minute ago, He delivered me from rock music. Uh, you, you know, when, when uh, if I'm buzzing, looking for something, maybe traveling out, going somewhere to preach, and I hear some of that, I cringe. That's of the goodness of God. Because you know what? I used to love it. He delivered me. You know what? You think about all the times that God has delivered you. And not just the ones you know about. What about going down the road and the ones you didn't know about? That, that, that semi coming at you head on that you never even seen because of the goodness of God. See, uh, that, 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 that is what we need to praise Him for is His deliverance every day. Every, you know what? Uh, I fully believe this and, and listen, uh, I know that President Trump is not without, without sin and without problems, but listen, you know what? If Hillary Clinton, you know what God did? He delivered us from that. Because in every man's mind, she done already had it sewed up, didn't she? But God moved in and did a great and wondrous thing. You know what? Count that as deliverance because that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, we need to understand and know this morning when we, uh, you know, sometimes why I, I don't think we're any happier than we are is because we don't recognize what God's done for us. We're not happy. And the reason we're not happy, we don't meditate in, on the goodness that God's given us. It is He that bringeth salvation unto kings who delivereth David from his, from his servant, from the hurtful sword. Rid me, deliver me from the hand of strange children. Now, young people, this one's for you. And unfortunately, sometimes I, I see it among the uh, older people, but more often than not among young, because whether we want to believe it or not, young people are vulnerable. You, you remember when you was 15 or 16 and you had the world by the tail and didn't know how stupid you really were? Yeah. Uh, and that, that, that's, that's the vulnerable period. And, and, and David, David alludes to that time in, uh, uh, in that vulnerable period in, in, in people's life. And so it's just rid me, deliver me from the hand of strange children. Now, you know what? Uh, when, when I, especially after we moved to Cumberland City, uh, my, my best friend at the time, Steve, and his mother still lived at Carlisle, and, and I, could, I became something of a recluse. It was just me and Mom. Judy married and she was gone. And, and me and Mom was there. I'd go to school, try in school, come home, watch TV, go to bed, and do it all again. And, and to the point.
point that some people thought I was strange and then Steve moved to Cumberland City too. And listen, I, 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 I wish he was here today. I really do. I miss Steve terribly. But he came and said, Larry, you got to get out more. And you know what? No, I didn't. I'd been just as well. I'd been better to be at home. And then, and then, uh, when my other friend Greg Du got his driver's license, see, then we just uh, we decided it was time to run around. And then I got a car, and and, and I, I, you know, and mine was a Land Barge. It was a 1972 Ford LTD. I could get eight people in it: four in the front, four in the back. And Donna will attest to that because she's been there right beside me. Uh, every, every kid I hung with, we could cram into that car. And, but we needed to study at home. You see what I'm saying? I did not need, beware of people like that. Beware of people that bring strange things to me. Brother Jarrett and I was talking about smoking before, before uh, service time. He said he smoked one cigarette in his life. I thought, well, you're better off than me. Right? That will grow on you. Uh, music will grow on you. you. You'll get to the point you prefer that above the things of God. And sin is progressive. You remember that. Sin is progressive. And it will consume you. It'll start out with cigarettes. It'll go to beer. It'll go to whiskey. And it'll go to pot. Modern day, it'll go to math. Right? Sin is progressive. Beware of those strange people that come into your life and seem like they have the better answer. Now, they're not always going to come straight forward like, like, my, like my friends did. Sometimes they'll knock on the door and they'll say, we're from the, cheech, the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Do you have the courage to say, most certainly you're not? We meet down at 805 Nacor Drive. You're not the church of the Latter-day Saints. You know, you know what they really are? They're Mormons. I'm not afraid to say that. And you know what? They do not believe in the God of the Bible. We need to avoid them. Stay close to home. Stay close to home. Have lots of honest friends. Enjoy being around them. But you know what it is? It's a cult. It's exactly what it is. They're strange, aren't they? You want to go riding around in a buggy all the time? I, I, I say it's neat for about the first four, four miles. But you want to take a buggy from here to Katie's? You see what I'm saying? Beware of them. Beware of them. And, and, and so then, we as the Lord's people, a lot of times what steals our happiness is people. What robs us of gladness is the people that we have around us. Well, what takes away our pleasure is the ones that are supposed to be our friends. We ought to be happy, happy people. So David gives us a fair warning. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity. Now, uh, at the fellowship Friday night, uh, Brother uh, Mark Clark Sr. made this comment about Brother Christopher, and it's very true. He is an humble man. I wish I was as humble as Christopher sometimes. I wish it all the time, but I think about it more at other times than, than others. And vanity is out there. Vanity goes like this. I have a better idea. That's what Joseph Smith thought, was it not? I have a better idea. That's what Charles Taz Russell thought, wasn't it? If you don't know him, he started, uh, he started the Jehovah's Witness. Alexander Campbell, he had a better idea, didn't he? Thought he did. That's your Church of Christ. You know, there wasn't even a, such a thing as the Church of Christ to about 1825. It, it didn't exist. And you know why? <laughs> Somebody can't belong with vanity. 
You know, vanity goes like this. I can do it. I am able. No, you're not. You're not able to do anything. Vanity is what's right. You, you, you know what? Being baptized for redemption feels good to the flesh. It's because you can do it. You know why? Setting isolated and helpless as a sinner and if God don't come, there's no help for you. You know why that cringes our flesh so much? <clears throat> that it all is of God and there's nothing whatsoever that you can do about it. See, and, and so we find that as it, it, David is giving praises to God, he warns us of vanity, warns us of being proud of ourselves, warns us of, of looking at our own ability with grandeur. He says it's, it's not true. And their right hand, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Lies, telling lies, telling that there's a better way. Way, verse 12, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. Another way to happiness is watching them children grow. It ought to be. Watching your children mature in the faith. Watching your children uh, proceed and go along the way. Uh, all my children but Bella are grown now. Uh, and it's been a great blessing to see what God has done for them. Provided uh, my sons with two wonderful wives. And, and bringing grandchildren the way that he has. Uh, see my, my daughter willing and, and very satisfied just to be at home. What a, what a great thing that has been as I've watched it along the way. And... We need to uh, we need to look to our children now. Listen, to have children like that, you've got to contribute something. In fact, you have to contribute a whole lot. You know what? It ought never be a question. Are we going to church this morning? Sick? Cold? Whatever. Mine was in church. And that's where they were going to be. I remember one time, and I'm not sure how many children we had at home at that time because we had some foster kids. I know Douglas was with us, and uh, I don't know how many more, but the van broke down, and all we had was the pickup. So all the kids got in the back of the pickup, me and Donnie got in front, and we came to church. That, that, that's, there, there were no question that's when you're going to enjoy the blessings of God. You know, but if they call, you know what? Children's, children don't call the shots in a biblical home. You know, how foolish it would, mean, would be if I give Bella the checkbook and said, honey, go pay the bills. She, she's not ready for that. But you know what? I, I, I've seen... Uh, I, I've seen parents, you know, they throw in one of their little hissy fits. Honey, it's going to be okay. No, get them up by the arm and give them three or four of these and say, listen, you sit down and get that mouth shut up. Last night, Bella started with a blah, blah, blah. I said, girl, you keep it on, I'll give you something to cry about. And you know what? She stopped. Because that's how you rear children. And if you let them be in control, you'll regret it later. You won't get to enjoy what David did. And in fact, if you follow David's life out, he wasn't the best dad. Absalom, Absalom, oh my son, Absalom, Absalom, my son. And you know why? Because Absalom died in rebellion to his own father. You be very careful with those children, they're precious. And you have a very precious little time to influence them for the cause of Christ. And, and so David gives praise for that, that our sons may be plants grown up in their youth, cornerstone, that our daughters may be cornerstones. Now, you, you, you talk about a wonderful thing, and, and we understand some of the things the Bible says about women that are very true in the New Testament three separate times, that our women may be silent in the assembly, right? But the cornerstones. Now, there's only one cornerstone left in Stewart County that I know about. Y'all want to go see it this week? Go down to Bear Springs at the furnace there. 
standing in front of the furnace on the left hand corner, it says erected AD 1873. And that is cornerstone. And you know what? That whole thing rests on that one corner. And it says here that women can be that. I mean, you can't, you don't lose nothing in the translation. So, ladies, how are you going to do that? Well, Sarah, you're sitting beside you. Dessa, you got her in your lap. That is how you influence you. You're, you're the cornerstone because uh, every day I get up and I hit the bricks and I'm gone about 10 hours a day. And you know who's there with Bella the 10 hours I'm gone? It's either Donna or Sarah. You know, when my little ones were all at home, you know who took the brunt of it? Donna. You know, my boys confided in me after they were adults that they'd rather get a whipping from me than their mama. And it, you, know, you know what it was? She did business. I did too, but apparently I wasn't, uh, I wasn't in the gap as I thought I was. So there's your cornerstone, ladies. And do it, and do it well. Uh, don't, 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 be, don't be ashamed of that. So as David is singing this new song and giving praises, he praises uh, the position of parents. And you know what? We ought to be happy in that. We ought to be miserable. You ought to think that your life is not adequate. You, we ought to be happy with our children and, and give them praise and glory and honor for who they are. And that is what we ought to do. Verse 13. That our garners or gatherers may be full. Uh, that our garners, I said gatherers, or actually a garner is a gatherer, but in this text it means barns or cribs. Uh, he says, we'll praise him. You, you know what? When you go into our house, everybody's been there, say Brother Mike and Sister Brenda, but you go in our house, it's just a little double wide. And have the front room, the dining room, and to the left is the kitchen. And, and you go in that kitchen, and you open the doors, and there's food upon food upon food. We have a pantry to the left in the kitchen. I actually built it myself. You open it up, floor to ceiling, hand food that Donna put up herself. That's good, ain't it? You go a little way down the hall, and the first door on your right is our our laundry room, and there's an upright freezer. You open it up. I did this last night, just kind of looking to see what God had done for me. Literally floor to ceiling. More food. I'm just crammed full on the back porch. I mean, we are, we are redneck enough. We have a freezer on the back porch. And you open that, and you know what? There's even more food back there. God's been good. Uh, my garner's full. And you know what? It's simply because of the goodness of God that, you know what? I am sure that we could go a month or six weeks and, and, and not buy anything and still have plenty to eat. Now, this, this, this is the thing. And you know when you're a kid, oh, I don't like that. Well, so what? Now, uh, I'm sure because a lot, a lot of that is vegetable. And, and what does, you know, what does everybody think that every meal has to contain? A meat of some kind, right? You know what, when I was a kid, we had meat about three times a week. The rest of the time it was vegetables. And, and, and you know what, it's good that God's provided for that, but just praise Him for what you have. And you know where happiness is at? We're talking about happiness this morning. This morning Praising God for exactly what you have, not what you want. You get back home, you go through your house, and everything, you know what? I, I love my bed. Me and Donna bought a bed at an auction uh, several years ago. It's a very comfortable bed, probably the best bed we ever had. And, and, and it's comfortable to me. I ought to praise Him every time I stretch out and lay down. You know what? It's a very comfortable bed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have a quilt that we have since we married. Uh, uh, her Aunt Dassey made it for us for our wedding gift. It's a, a Dutch doll quilt. That, uh, and I remember when Dassey gave it to us, uh, she said, Larry, I double batted it for you. And I really didn't even know what that meant. And I just said, thank you. Because, you know, I, I felt like it had to be good. And you know what? What that means, instead of one layer of insulation, it has two. And that thing will keep you warm on the very coldest night. 
So when he'd been cold recently, uh, and, and we call it Aunt Dashie, and he'd been cold, and Donna says, do you want me to put Aunt Dashie on the bed? And I said, yeah, you better. I've been awful cold. And uh, that's something to thank God for, isn't it? Now when you see it, it looks like it's been through the mill. And all the Dutch dolls are fading away, and they're getting real, uh, they're just tatted on there, so they're gone. Uh, and they're falling off. And you can see it's real frayed. You can see the double batting now. And you know what, what it really is. But you know what? It still keeps me warm. Very, very nice quilt. And, and so when you go through your house and you see all that God has done for you, you praise God for it. You be happy in His provision. Not what you don't have, but praise Him for what you do have. And the Lord will, uh, the Lord will bless you for that. That our, that our garners may be full, according all, according all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousand in our street, that our oxen may be strong in labor, and there be no breaking in. Now, we always want something that, you know, I, I, I've seen a few, I saw an ox not too long ago whenever uh, uh, Brother Philip came and preached that meeting for us. Um, I took him down to the home place and him and his family went to see. And uh, we looked at the ox down there and the oxen and uh, uh, they're not very pretty beings. And they're big and their noses are slimy. And uh, I, I mean, to me, that smell. But you know what? They get the job done, don't they? Now, uh, our little car out here, Dodge Journey, and it is not the favorite car that we've ever had, but I've learned to be thankful for it. One thing, Don tells me every time I, I mock it, that you better be thankful for what you have. Uh, but it's got over 200,000 miles on it. Been a very faithful little car. Uh, I need to be thankful for it. Every time, and I don't like driving it. I've drove it very few times in the six years we've had it. Um, every time I get out of the car, I bust my knee on the steering wheel, and I'm not that tall of a person, so I can't imagine if Adam tried to drive it. And I, I, just, I just don't like it, but you know what? I've learned to be thankful for it. And <coughs> last couple of months, the repair of bills is about got right up there with a new car payment. Dave Ramsey says it's time to get a new one, right? But last time we took it to the shop, 60 bucks and we was back on our way again. God's been good. God's been very good. My, my, my red truck out there, I've now had it, I got it before Donna got her car. So I would say I at least have had it seven years, maybe more than that. I don't know if Matthew was still at home when we got it or not. And it's got almost 200,000 200, miles on it. And it, it wasn't new when I got it. God's been good. You know what? Lord, the Lord keep blessing me and things to be happy. I'll get in it in the morning, drive the clutch with it, back to work. See, there's things to be happy for. The problem is this, is we want things that we don't need and we want things that other people have and you know what that is that's jealousy that's jealousy at, at its core is wanting something that someone else has and, and, and we as lord's people a lot of time what robs us of our happiness is looking around at the ungodly world and saying boy i'd really like to have that you know what You'll never be happy as long as you compare yourself to this world. The Bible says we are pilgrims and strangers. And so if you get settled in and, and, and you want what all is around you, then listen, you'll never be happy. And you know what? Beauty fades. When I was a kid, uh, I don't know, six, seven years old, everybody wanted a three-bedroom red brick, right? And that, that, that was top of the line. My, my Aunt Clay, my granddaddy's sister, had a little two-bedroom brick down here in Tennessee Ridge. And that whole ridge wasn't nothing but farm. And all of a sudden, these little red brick houses, and they're everywhere now. But you know what? When you go down to the ridge now, all that brick is faded, is it not? 
And, and, you, and you know what, things, and they're out of stock. You know, somebody buys one of those old brick houses now, what do they do? They paint the brick, right? Because it's out of style. You, you, you buzz by and say, oh, that house was built in 65. And you keep going, right? <coughs> and then some, some young people buy it and they paint it blue or red or purple. And, you know, that's going to go. That, that little house me and Donnie used to have in the mill was built in 62, that little orange brick house. And, and someone painted it red. And it, it looked a lot better. It really did. It looked better than the orange brick we had. But I noticed the other day when I was buzzing by there, it's starting to peel. And you know what? It won't be very long. It's going to need to be painted again. See, you won't ever be happy as long as you're focusing on this world. And, and so we wonder why we're not happy. Well, the devil robs us from happiness most of the time, does it not? We need to quit comparing ourselves to everybody else and begin to think of all the wonderful things that God has done for us, and then we will be happy. Verse 15. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Oh, I want to get verse 14 at the end. That there be no complaining... <laughs> in our streets. Now, what have you complained about this morning? I mean, really. I know one thing for sure I've complained about already today. I am, I'm being honest. Every one of y'all complained about something. My hip was hurting. This right hip hurts me a lot. And I got, I got up out of the bed and I was going into the bathroom and I went, man, my hip hurts. I wished it would stop. You know what I'm doing? I'm complaining. Am I not? Uh, I know me and Donna's trying to burn out all our old wood because some of it's been there for three or four years and we just want to clean it all out and start again. Well, we're doing it and, and we're about done, but the whole time, I mean, literally these sticks are so fragile when you bring them in, no matter how careful you are, there's junk falling off of them. Donna's in there. I wish this, I'm so sick of sweeping this floor. Right? You know what? We had wood, didn't we? <clears throat> See, we complain about something all the time, do we not? Complain, you know, uh, that it ain't big enough or it's too big. It's not pretty enough, it's not pretty enough or it's the wrong color. You know, uh, uh, I remember this distinctly. One of the first family members I ever had that was in the funeral home was my, my granddaddy outlaw. And they, uh, I thought it was a nice casket. I'd never seen that many caskets up to that point. It was brown. And I remember my aunt complaining about the casket cover. And, and, and you're talking about, I, I was nine or ten, something like that, a little ten-year-old boy. And I mean to think, you know, what does it matter? Nobody's going to see it. You see what I'm saying? But it was something, and, and you know what? <clears throat> Papa's been dead for nearly 40 years, and nobody's seen that casket since. So why fuss about it? Why complain? And you know why? It'll rob your I've often thought it wonder if my aunt has, has brooded over that casket color for the last 40 years. And I hope she hadn't, but that's how the devil rocks your happiness. That, that, that's how he gets it. And so that uh, we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know and, and praise God and quit complaining. Don't let that rob your happiness. Be happy this morning. Be glad in what he's given you. Uh, verse 15, happy is the people that is in such a case. Now, that is a promise. That is a biblical promise. Happy is the people that is in such a case. So this morning, if you're not happy, whose fault is it? <clears throat> right? If you're in that case, Satisfied and glad and, and saying, you know what? I have I have Abigail and I have AJ and I have Gracie 
and I have uh, uh, Maddie. <laughs> I have them all. I have Matthew, and Sarah, and, I, and all my children, Adam, and little Bella. All should be happy, right? But you know, if you're not really careful, you'll fuss about it. We'll fuss about it. Now I remember when all the kids were at home, money was tight, and I remember Friday evenings. And sometimes it wasn't every Friday; there were other Friday on payday. At a pizza place that used to be on Church Street, uh, I'd swing in there, or Donna would order a pizza, and that was our big thing: was to eat pizza. You know what? We were happy. You think, well, that's a drag. And now, now we have to have all this. Uh, we got pizza the other night. And we had breadsticks and pizza and and chicken and all this. You know, I often I was wondering when we were eating that because I like bread. I like breadsticks more than I do pizza. I was like, I wonder if we're happy now as we were then. And sometimes I would have to say no. I remember, and, and Sarah did this for me because Bella wanted all the dipping sauce. And Sarah's like, Dad ain't even ate yet. And so I got me some and dipped it and dumped it on my plate. And you know what? I appreciate Sarah doing that. But I would have been happy with that. You see what I'm saying? Our happiness really is how we look at things, is it not? And uh, happiness is not the building hacked out. Happiness is if the Holy Ghost comes in and fills the building, right? That's happiness. And we need to understand and know really what happiness is. Go with me to the book of Psalms. 146, just a page over. And maybe on the same page because your Bible may not be laid out like mine. Psalms 146 in the first verse. The Bible says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Now, I want you to ask you this morning, are you able to praise Him? It says, Praise ye the Lord. And I believe that that is kind of a fleshly praise, not necessarily in the flesh, but such as singing and praying and lifting holy hands. Praise ye the Lord. And then it goes a step further. Praise ye the Lord, O my soul. Now, how many times do you praise the Lord with your soul, with your inner man, with that inner being part that was saved? How often do you praise the Lord with that? Because really, that is the key to happiness. You know why people quit church? A lot of times, number one, a lot of times they've never been born again to start with. That's why they don't attend, because preaching gigs them. And the other thing is this, is, uh, is I'm... They're not happy. You know, sometimes I visited people that were laying out in church. And, well, Brother Larry, I'm just not happy. Well, so what? What are you looking for? Entertainment? What are you looking for? Party? Happy is the man whose God is, is, whose God is the Lord. That's the happy person. Listen, we're not here for a few short years to uh, roller skate and give the kids pizza. We're here to spread the gospel. Happy is that man. And, and so we as the Lord, we, cer we certainly need to, to evaluate, uh, are we praising Him as we should? Is our inner man, is our soul praising the Lord? While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God. While I have... Uh, while I have any being or, or energy or power, put not your trust in princes nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help. Now, all of you know that are my Facebook buddies that uh, uh, I defend President Trump. But you know what? The last few days I've learned this and, and I'm not upset on him signing a budget agreement. I think it was a good thing. Get these people. You know, one branch of our military, the Coast Guard, don't get paid unless that budget is passed. 
And so I wasn't upset at that, but I found this. You know what? There's no eternal hope and security in President Trump or anybody else. You know what? Uh, this nation, if you look at it, it just as it is, it deserves to end. We deserve the judgment of God. Killing babies up to the day before they're born, you know what? We deserve God's judgment. In, in, in every sense of the word. And, and so listen, as you think about happiness, as you think about joyfulness, if you think of, as you think about gladness, don't compare it to this world. Verse 4. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to the earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord. So two things. If you have God, and do you, what's your hope? What's your hope? Have you placed it entirely in the Lord Jesus Christ, which made heaven and earth and sea and all that are therein, and which keepeth truth forever, who executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth prisoners. That's where you happen to see us. You know what? I was a prisoner one time. I was a prisoner to sin. I was a prisoner to this world. But the Lord saved me from that. From that. You know, wait, I made a funny picture when I was in Mexico the first time. In Mexico, each village has a jail. And it's not like the one we have down here um, at the in uh, Cedar Street. It's cut into the side of a building, and that's it. And it has an iron door on it. That's it. No bathroom. Nothing. And I had a picture of myself made, and I didn't shut the door all the way, but held the door in my hands. That was no prison because you know what? When I was done with the picture, I pushed it open. But I was in a prison of sin, and nobody could help me. There was nobody that could come to my rescue save the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're not happy this morning, one, two things. You're not where God ought to be. You want you to be. You've not took an inventory of your life and said, God's been good to me. Or you're lost. One of those will infringe your happiness. Are you happy?